I'd like to welcome you to the June 9, 2015 meeting of the McMinnville City Council. Uh, before we start tonight, I just want to make sure everybody understands, if you haven't been here before, that our meetings are now being streamed live by KLYC and also being recorded by McMinnville Community Media for later broadcast on both Verizon and Comcast. And so as for a courtesy of everybody in the audience, we ask that if you have a cell phone, you silence them now and you refrain from texting or receiving or sending texts. And if you do have an important call to make that you go out into the lobby or go outside to make that uh, call so we can keep the moving, uh, the meeting moving along. That being said, uh, I want to also mention that uh, Councilor Rudin does have an excused absence, so he will not be with us tonight. And that being said, I'll ask um, Councilor Mankey to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Kelly. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, uh, Kelly. This is a time uh, in our agenda that we reserve for anybody who would like to come up and speak to the council on anything that is not a regular agenda item. There are some things that we cannot uh, talk to you about tonight, and they're listed over here. I know they're a little bit hard to see tonight because of the sun but if the city if it's a topic already on the agenda we ask for you to wait till that topic item is uh, brought up can we lower the shades yeah a, uh, if the city is in a matter of any kind of litigation we can't discuss anything that has to do with any litigation the city's in if it's a quasi-judicial land use manner such as a zone change or an annexation conditional use anything that's a land use matter we cannot uh, speak of that and a matter scheduled for a public hearing at some future date. So if you bring up anything, we know there's a public hearing coming up at a future time. We'll let you know that so you can actually then make arrangements to come back at that, at that time. So this is a time I'll ask, would anybody like to come to the council and speak to the council on anything that is not on our agenda? And if you do, we ask that you come up and actually verbally say your name and address for the record and also sign on to the uh, paper. Uh, if not, let, uh, let the record also show, Rose, that we do have a letter tonight from Armin Moran, Mr. Moran, regarding parking downtown. So it's, your letter's been entered into the record. Your letter's been entered into the record now. So if you'd like to say anything about it, you can feel free to come up. And again, we ask you to state your name and log in or. I, I put my two cents in. Uh, 
uh, well, there, there is a, a parking garage down there, but uh, well, that's, that's not really reasonable to put that, uh, to go over that garage, especially at night and walk into to some of the entertainment. So I, I just had I thought about it very good. And uh, so it would be, that building is, a, is quite a, 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 quite a, a, I would say, a, a, it makes another, a, a, with people coming in town, uh, a, ter a terrorist. Uh, and uh, so that, uh, I think they have, uh, I don't know, they're going to have a few rooms up there. But uh, that's uh, the, the dining rooms and that is beautiful. And, uh, so I came up with that idea of uh, uh, bringing back uh, myself trapping and going to a different uh, country, uh, a different part of the country. That, uh, 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 well, I, uh, of course, Reno is, uh, is unreal. That's what they live in, taxi uh, 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 Reno, I mean. Uh, and, uh, so I think that uh, the taxis here, uh, they, they give them a few bucks. So, and then we're going to have to worry about the uh, parking. Yeah. Okay, thank you. But, uh, I don't, I, I'll probably, I don't know if there'll be a committee on this, but, uh, but I, oh, whatever. And, uh, I, 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 how, how did that sound with this thought, what I thought, what it could help? The, the garage, the old garage at the end, end of the, the third street here. Uh, uh, he probably would like it, uh, to sell it. Sell that thing, it's got a, a, a small <coughs> garage, uh, uh, and the parking garage, a two-story garage, two, uh, story, uh, garage and uh, it'd be great to have a for that of so, I saw the guy up there. Okay, Ms. Rod, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your. Um, Specific thoughts. Thank you. I like to talk. I've been here since 1997. Yeah. 18 years. Okay, thank you very, thank you very much, Mr. Well, anyhow, yeah, Ms. Morin, thank, thank you very much, thank you very much for your comments, and we have your, have your letter. And Okay, the, count, the council thanks you very much. Let's go ahead and move on with our meeting. We have our old business and councillors. We have the minutes. Been, been in this building, we have the minutes from the May 12, 2015 dinner meeting. Okay, we're, Ms. Martin, we're going to go ahead and move along with our meeting. We have the minutes from the May 12, 2015 dinner meeting and council session as well as the minutes from the May 13th Budget Committee meeting uh, for the 2015-2016 proposed city budget and 2015-2016 proposed urban renewal budget. And has everybody, at the, all the council had a chance to read the minutes? Do we have any modifications, changes, or corrections? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of all those meetings. So moved. It's moved by Councilor Hill. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilor Mankey. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Here and let it show that the minutes are approved. Um, that will take us into, we do have a couple public hearings tonight. Our first public hearing is regarding the proposed 2015-2016 budget. And that's the budget is approved by the budget committee. Now, our first budget committee meeting, or our first budget hearing tonight, 
um, deals with uh, the regular city budget, then the urban renewal agency meeting, and that meeting will exactly follow after our regular council meeting. And so at this time, I'm going to open the first bu public budget hearing uh, on the proposed 2015-16 city budget. So I'll open the hearing. And Marsha, can you go ahead and give us a staff report, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and council members. Uh, ORS 294.438 does require the city to publish a summary of the 2015-16 budget and also to hold a public hearing to receive public input on the budget that was approved by the budget committee. Uh, the summary was published in the news register and also is available on the city website under latest news. Um, there is uh, one change that I wanted to mention that uh, was approved by the budget committee that was not in the uh, original budget document and that was the change in the community contributions. Uh, that was uh, your community media, homeward bound pets, and zero waste. Uh, the original budget had a total of 19,000. Uh, the budget committee uh, in the evening of May 13th approved an increase from 19,000 to a total of 30,000 for those community contributions. At this time also, I wanted to mention briefly that um, there, we are proposing that there will be some changes to the, to the budget that uh, will be brought to the city council on June 23rd for adoption. Um, those changes are very typical changes that we make every year. It's information that we didn't have at the time we brought the budget to the budget committee. Uh, so those changes are related to the fire association contract, uh, health insurance rates, um, additional salary survey adjustments, and there was actually a decrease in our WICOM dispatch fees compared to what we had budgeted. Um, and so if you have any other questions about the uh, approved budget from the budget committee or any other questions. Okay, Larry, let's start with you. Have any questions for Marsha? Uh, no, I don't. Thank you, Marsha. Kelly? No, thank you. Kevin, we'll come back to you. Um, Remy? Uh, not at the moment. Okay, Scott? Uh, no. Council President Jeffries, anything for you? No. Okay, none for you. What I'd like to do now is open up this for public testimony from anyone in the hot audience who'd like to speak to us on the budget. This is a simple public hearing, so we'll just call you forward uh, if you'd like to speak and come forward again, state your name, and write it on the list if you haven't already on the sign-in list. And we ask in the interest of time that if somebody already has testified on a budget item that you don't need to come back up unless you really want to and do it so that being said i think i saw one person so far put up and that's steve rush so steve come on forward and uh, sign in and state your name and address for the record please okay my name is steve rupp uh, my home address is 14921 hidden hills road and I'm slow at writing things down sometimes, so I apologize. So I have to start with an apology. I prepared some documents for the May 26th meeting, but due to lack of time, I wasn't really on your agenda. So you have those in your packet. And also for tonight, I also prepared a few uh, extra things. So the, the May 26th one is a purple thing and it was a budget request asking you to restore the uh, McMinnville Downtown Association Committee for Public Arts budget to its original level of 2008. It was only after I prepared this and submitted it that I found out that you guys had already done it. <laughs> so <laughs> most of this is, is unnecessary. Uh, there are two things in it that I would like to point out. If we could go down a couple of slides. That one is one. Uh, oh, it has expenditures. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Okay, uh, the three each Lyman Whitaker wind sculptures, I've asked for $1,000 for next year. Uh, that you will see on in the white paper is gone. And also there's a walking map printing, $1,400 in there. Uh, two days after I produced this, the committee decided it wanted to go to a web-based uh, internet 
walking map and not print maps anymore. So there's $2,400, which is, when you look at the, the white paper I submitted today, will just be unspecified. The next one, if we can go there. These are Lyman Whitaker wind sculptures, which we really like and think would be nice around town, although we don't have a final location. We've tried two or three, and one of our favorite ones, a car drove through and took out two trees last weekend, so, uh, or two weekends ago, so uh, we're rethinking where we're gonna put them. But today, we went out to the coast, and the committee bought three of them. So it's a moving target, but we have already, we've committed to three of these things. Now we have to find a suitable location for them in town. Steve, are the ones that you purchased much like the, um, the photos with the indicator? Very similar, very okay. similar, yeah. Uh, uh, what's, the, what's the height on those, Steve? Uh, the shortest one is about seven feet. The tallest one is 14 foot okay. six or something like that. Are any of the pieces insured? Like, as you said, there was a damage to an already purchased piece? Uh, when we install pieces in the town that belong to the town, the town does, takes care of the insurance. Okay. Uh, my understanding is there's a $1,000 deductible, but the, the, the town insures all the, even the, even the artwork that's here on loan is insured by the, uh, by the city. That is part of the contract the city has with the, with the artist. Great. Thank you. So then going to these white sheets, since last December, I, I told you, I told you I was going to be, we were, the committee was gonna be putting some things in. Well, these are the three things that went in since last December, the, uh, and they're not up there. You, you'll have to look at your white sheets to see them, but reaching knowledge over at the library, it, it's installed. It's been vandalized. We are going to have it repaired, but not until the new cameras are installed in the area, because if, I, I'm sure if we do it now, it'll just get vandalized again. And, and the, the, the vandalization that happened, was it with paint or was it Straight structural da damage? No structural damage. Well, it looked to me like somebody took a very heavy grit sandpaper or file and filed the paint off the side of it. So the surface, instead of being smooth now, is rough, and we're going to have to smooth, the artist will smooth the surface out and repaint it. Okay. They've, they've well, asked twice to do it already. I thought it was filed down, all the colors off of it. It's rough okay. metal. Just raw it's metal there now. Okay. But uh, the artist really wants to get it done because they think it reflects badly on them, but yeah. we've convinced them to wait till after the cameras go into that area. The second one was one we stuck in called Miracle Grow over by the post office. And uh, we thought that was an appropriate one for that location because it's organic in nature and the whole garden there is maintained by the uh, McMinnville Garden Club, I believe. Oh, and it's, it adds a lot of good color. Oh, and sometimes it can be pretty, uh, uh, pretty drab, drab over there. Over there yeah. And it's got bluebirds on top, too. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third one is this Conical Etude 4. That was the piece that was over at the library that got vandalized twice, and we had to send it back up to Washington to get it repaired. When we brought it back. We put it in the entrance to the CDC building. It's, it's, it's doing fine. Nobody's bothered it at all. And I think things are going well. Well, it doesn't scare you like the cougar when you... <laughs> like the cougar, you'd come around and you'd say, whoa. Yeah, the first, the first day that was there, it, was, it shocked a couple of people. I remember that. So anyway, you have a, a revised proposed budget. Uh, we're always open to comments and questions. Uh, this is where we stand at this point in time. But it, as you can see, in only two weeks, this thing's really a moving target. So, so we, we kind of revise it as necessary as we go along. Steve, now with these, with the Lyman Whitaker pieces, between city-owned and... Um, on loan or rented. How many pieces do we have in McMinnville now? Uh-oh. I know it's well over. Is it I think I'm going to have to guess, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm going to have to guess. We have, we have approximately eight honorariums in town mm -hmm. and approximately 20-some-odd owned pieces. Yeah, I thought it was around 30, some 28 to 30, somewhere around. Yeah, it's in that range. 
I carried the piece of paper around with me all day that has that information on it. I didn't bring it tonight. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> well, I know, Steve, anyway. I, sh I sure do, and I think the CALS appreciates everything you and the MDACPA does. If it wasn't for what happened a few years ago and you guys wanting to get involved, we wouldn't have the art we have in the city, and I think that just goes so well with... with I think city, everybody so. on the committee really enjoys what they're doing. They really like working with the community and it's a pleasure to work with this community yeah. and I want to thank you really from the bottom of my heart for the for restoring our uh, budget and part of that is going to be we're going to put the uh, you know, the new uh, park out on Baker Creek and Hill we will be providing the um, Base uh, bases for the artworks that's going to go in there and right now uh, Kiwanis is trying to arrange for three artworks uh, they have, I think, around $10,000 raised for this. It's going to cost around 20 some odd, maybe 30. So there's a ways to go, and but there's a ways to go before the the time comes when to do it. Okay. Do we have any anybody have any questions for Steve Remy? Let's start with you. Um, with the walking map printing uh, budget coming out, um, does is there a budget for producing the online map, whether it's for the graphic work, or I assume it'll be on the uh, yes, we, downtown? We, we figure it would take about 200 to $300 of Rebecca's time to do that. She's, she's really good. She does a good job. Cassie can vouch for her. But uh, so. yeah, what, what, what we did was we decided that $1,400 for, for paper or $1,400 for art, art one. Yeah. So, Part of what we're doing, frankly, is we're using some of that $1,400 and one of our honorariums to help pay for these Lyman Whitaker sculptures, right. which, is, which is also a, a change from the past because in the past we've not, not generally used our base budget for purchase of art. So that is kind of a, a change in direction for us. I'm not sure where it's going to go, but that's, that's happening. I think it's a great um, redirection of funds. Um, will that that three hundred dollars then? Will that come out of? That'll be is separate. It, that's why it's not on this budget. I, I think that's going to be this year's budget. Okay. It should be. Should the thing is. Out of the 2014. Are we going to have it done by June 30th? We will. This year's, this year's budget. budget. Awesome. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Hey Scott, do you have anything? Well, Steve, as the mayor indicated, thank you so very much. You know. My recollection, you know, as as I look back over the time period, um, you know, we talk about livability, we talk about uh, creating um, items that bring people to McMinnville, and to look where we are today, uh, it just shows uh, another side of McMinnville, and that would be, you know, the cultural arts and displaying those. And we're, t we're getting to a point where if we keep on this same level, we're going to be known for our art as well as some of the other things that we strive for. And, and you and your, you and the group, the passion, I mean, when we were putting the Fox up, you, you guys were as excited about that as Kent and us, you know, so the passion is, is well received and we thank you so very much. I love that Fox. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Speaking of that, I got a phone call about the middle of last week. A woman from Gresham, they want to start a public art thing in Gresham. And she wanted to know if I would share our documents with them so they could Good. use that as a foundation for their public art thing. So we're already starting to be known a little bit for our Absolutely. public art. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, Kevin. Kelly. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to see the different art pieces. Yeah, hey. I'm excited about the wind stuff. But. I like those. Well, okay, those Larry. are really cool when the wind blows. You should have seen them today over at the coast. It's, it, they're great. Appreciate all you're doing. Thank you, Larry. Okay, thank you, Steve. Thanks for coming in front of us tonight. I know it was kind of rushed for you, but thank you very much, and we're glad we could restore it to the full $10,000 for you. I really appreciate it very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to uh, provide any testimony on the... Uh, the budget regarding uh, the 2015-2016 budget. Okay, if hear, hearing none, then what I'll, what I'll do is I'll close the public testimony session, bring it back around the 
table for uh, discussion any consensus so uh, let's start Kelly with you do you have any questions or any comments on the budget uh, no real questions or comments I the changes okay Larry no I think it's uh, right in line with what we uh, what we'd like to see okay Scott N nothing further no okay Remy Kevin uh, I wasn't here for the first meeting could you break down what the what the contributions were to those three local asks and and Kevin uh, while she's looking that up I think what I, I can't remember but we talked a little bit about having some sustainability to our our, our giving so that we might have them look at a three-year block so they could plan for and so I think that's why we raised it and uh, and so there was kind of a, a yeah, little... zero waste is a match wasn't that a, wasn't yeah, it was, zero waste was a match. They, they had to go out yeah it was a match match funding before we would give anything to it sounds like they took our advice I think they came to us last year didn't they for money and we said go back work a little bit closer give better yeah. presentation I was looking through the materials and it looks like they took our advice and Good, but. Uh, so the amount that was approved for zero waste was five thousand with the match. Uh, homeward bound pets was four thousand, and community mediators was twenty one thousand. Oh, okay. Great. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Uh, I'd like to just say again, thank uh, Martha and her staff, especially Marcia and her staff, for putting another uh, excellent budget together, which we've got come so used to and of course uh, counselors uh, Hill and Mankey for being on the budget committee and the audit committee and all the financial kind of stuff I think um, I'm very happy with our budget this year I think it leaves us once again in very good financial uh, condition that I know a lot of cities would love to be in but unfortunately they're not so Again, Marsha, tell your staff, thank you very much, and, and pass it on to all the department managers. Martha, uh, good job, um, well known. So um, if we've reached a consensus, then what I'll do is I'll, Marsha, I'll ask you, do you think you have everything you need now to bring a resolution back at our June 23rd meeting adopting the budget? Okay, thank you. So on our June 23rd meeting, we'll actually have the resolution adopting our budget if there's no more questions around the table so that being said we'll go ahead and close this we'll close this public hearing the next public hearing is on the regarding uh, proposed uses of the state revenue sharing for fiscal year 2015-2016 as approved by the budget committee uh, and this is our second public hearing and this again is regarding the uses of the state revenue sharing and uh, so Marsha if you want to uh, go ahead and go over that with us thank you ORS 221-760 requires the city to pass a resolution each year that we want to receive the state shared revenue money and for 2015-16 we're estimating that that will be about 320,000 uh, it all the ORS also requires us to have a public hearing that um, allows the public to give some input on how the city intends to spare, spend the state shared revenues. The list that you see before you is the same list that was presented to the budget committee on May 13th. Okay, thank you, Marge. And if I remember right, Yamhill County is now over $100,000, so we have to, background, we have to certify, since the county's over 100,000, that what we're gonna use the uh, state revenue sharing for, is that correct? Yes. Uh, we always have, a, have had a resolution at the last meeting in June uh, that we send to the state saying, yes, we do want to receive state revenue sharing. Now that the Yamhill County population is more than 100,000, we have to send another, pass and send another resolution to the state that basically says we're eligible to receive state revenue sharing because we provide services like fire and police and right. similar. Just another paperwork housekeeping, housekeeping yes. issue. Okay, um, is there anybody in the audience who would like to, what I'll do is I'll open up for public testimony. Is there anything in the audience who would like to speak to anything on the use of our federal revenue or our state revenue sharing for our 2015-16 budget? If not, what I'll close the public testimony part and I'll bring it back around um, 
the table. So, Larry, let's start with you. I have no further questions. Okay, Kelly? Right. No further questions. Kevin, now we'll go with you. Nope. And Remy? No, sir. Scott? I'm fine. Okay, we didn't have any further testimony or questions around the uh, council, and we did not have any of the public who'd like to speak to us regarding the use of the state revenue sharing. Um, so, Marsha, again, do you have enough all the information you need to go ahead and prepare that for our June 23rd meeting? If so, go ahead and, and uh, we will go ahead and get that resolution on the June 23rd meeting. With that, I'll close this public hearing. Now, the next thing on our agenda is new business, and I'm very, very happy to announce there are a lot of hard work by our citizens, business people, uh, the council, the staff, um, having a report on our Transit Lodging Tax Advisory Committee as we move forward to visit McMinnville. And at this time, what I thought I would do is I'll uh, introduce uh, Aaron, and you can introduce Doug. Aaron, and the two of you can come forward if you'd like. I'm sure Doug would like to come up here. And uh, Why don't you also recognize uh, the others that are actually here that are on the TLT committee? Absolutely. So... Um Aaron Stevenson, 616 Northwest Birch. This is Doug LaPlaca from uh, Point B Destination. And we have several folks in the audience this evening who have been a part of our TLT Advisory Committee. So I'd, I'd like to start with those. We have Ty Rollins from Comfort Inn. We've got Liz Rulon from Atuscan Estate. Cassie Sellers from the MDA. Nathan Nottingham from the Chamber. And I think that is it from our TLT Advisory Committee. Also from our Strategic Planning Group, um, join us. We have Courtney Cunningham this evening. And I think I covered it from Strategic Planning as well. So Okay, well, welcome. Welcome back to the beautiful, Ben's nice, but welcome back to the beautiful city of McMinnville. Doug. Thank you. It's great to be here. All right address down there so again we'd really like to thank the council for your continued support of our transient lodging tax um, program and our transition now into a new destination marketing organization that will really benefit the entire city of McMinnville and since my last council presentation we have been absolutely working in overdrive to bring this vision to reality and I'd like to update you briefly on what we have been working on since um, March to begin, we have reunited our strategic planning team. So you have a portion of them here this evening, and that, of course, includes that TLT advisory committee um, and we to help us move forward towards the creation of our DMO. We've met twice um, in three-hour meetings to move us forward, and we have one more three-hour meeting with the entire strategic planning group um, tomorrow morning, and that has had a tremendous amount of participation from council and the mayor as well, as well as city staff, and we, we very much appreciate all of the time and effort from everyone involved um, in this project. And of course, all of these efforts have been led by Doug uh, LaPlaca, who's here with us this evening. Um, first off, Doug led us through the establishment of a timeline to get our DMO up and running. And we have a very aggressive but realistic timeline with tasks that take us through the end of this calendar year. So we've really looked at that. I think we're in a great place in terms of what we have on deck coming up through the end of 2015. We also initiated a process which included submissions from our community for input on the name of our new destination marketing organization. After discussing a wide range of options and consulting with Doug from a strategic standpoint on what would um, best work for our community, our strategic planning committee voted uh, unanimously to name our destination marketing organization Visit McMinnville. Um, at as the next effect of that, we created a strategy to buy the visitmcminnville.com URL. Visit McMinnville was not owned locally and it was not available. So uh, Doug helped us craft a strategy to be able to buy that back in essence um, from the owners. And we were able to successfully buy it back from a company in Washington. Um, so we now own www.visitmcminnville.com. Uh, the owner of the Visit McMinnville Twitter handle, Twitter handle has also volunteered to donate that to us, uh, as has the owner of visitmcminnville.org domain name. So we now feel as though we have the complete collection of Visit McMinnville, so we're able to redirect appropriately as we build our brand around that. 
Additionally, we created and launched a temporary landing page for that Visit McMinnville website. So if you do go to visitmcminnville.com right now, um, there is something there that says the site's under construction. It's got some lovely pictures of McMinnville, redirects questions to our visitor center for right now. Um, and so we have that up so that people who are out there looking will have at least some sort of indication of what, of what will be coming. Additionally, working in coordination with city staff, we initiated and completed an RFP process to hire a financial management company to work with Visit McMinnville. And the contract negotiations are underway with Greenstone Financial Reporting. I think you'll be hearing about that um, further later in the meeting. We also, uh, in coordination with city staff, the mayor and several council members, created a set of bylaws for Visit McMinnville. This was a very extensive and in-depth process from our entire strategic planning group, but a, a really terrific process. Um, and we have also initiated the, pro uh, the process of registering the organization with the state. That is now underway. We have an EIN as of today. Our strategic planning group will be re reviewing a draft of the contract between the city of McMinnville and Visit McMinnville at our meeting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. at the police department. We have also invested a substantial amount of time in visiting with um, a variety of tourism stakeholders and business leaders to share the vision of Visit McMinnville, provide updates, answer questions that they have, and we're going to continue these outreach efforts to ensure that there's clear communication with the community and to create a culture of collaboration um, as we move forward in this process. And each of the times that Doug has been in town, we've had our three hour strategic planning sessions in the morning, we've spent the afternoon out meeting with the community, with the businesses and tourism stakeholders. We have also um, started the process of, of laying the groundwork for the hire of an executive director. And we'll be moving forward with that process tomorrow morning with a review of an executive director job description, um, which the strategic planning team will take an, an in-depth look at um, on our agenda. In addition to those activities, the Transient Lodging Tax Advisory Committee would also like to submit nominees to council for the founding board of directors for Visit McMinnville. In accordance with the bylaws of Visit McMinnville, we're nominating nine individuals, seven of whom represent the tourism industry and two, visitor, and two citizens at large. Those nominees and their classifications are as follows. Myself, Aaron Stevenson from Third Street Flats, an industry position. Ty Rollins from Comfort Inn, industry. Cindy, Cindy Lorenzen from The Sage, industry. Maria Stewart, R. Stewart & Company, industry. Ellen Britton, Britton Vineyards, Linfield College, industry. Carmen Prano, Nick's Italian Cafe, Prano & Daughters, Fino & Fondo, industry. Emily Howard, Thistle, industry. Cassie Solar, Citizen at Large, and Courtney Cunningham, Citizen at Large. And those are the recommendations for our nominees to council. Do you have any questions for me? Yeah, she covered a lot. Any questions, Larry? Let's start with you. I know you've missed the last couple of meetings being out of, out of town. and. Well, but I've been at, I've been at most of the. But you've been informed. I've That's been right. at the uh, yeah I've been having fun. Uh, <laughs> I've been at the uh, planning meeting so far and and um, and no I have no further questions and I'm behind you. You're doing a great job and I'm, I'm impressed with the speed of lightning that you're traveling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, Larry Kelly. Uh, no questions. I've listened to a lot and I'm expecting more tomorrow. So yeah, it's been wonderful to see how this is coming together. And we greatly appreciate Doug's expertise and Aaron's leadership. Okay, Kevin, I'll lead you as council president to last. So let's go move you, Scott. Um, as Aaron indicated, uh, Doug, thank you. I, you know, uh, this council has taken new ideas, and then we go through a, a learning process. And when we get finished with that learning process, then that's where the strategic and the good thinking really happens. And we've done that time and time again. And I think this is probably uh, an area that has had, with your expertise, a lot of fast learning, but feet are on the ground much earlier than I would have ever expected that to happen. And it's giving us full purpose. Uh, we know where the dollars are going to go, and it's going to be building uh, a structure that will be lasting for years and years and every year we can we're going to be able to track the growth and so thank you and I'm so excited to, to see where we're going to be six months in a year two years this is going to be amazing Remy thank you very much and to everybody here that's worked on making this uh, uh, come, that's made this come to fruition um, I I have 
one question, which is you said that um, you're going to be working on uh, hiring an executive director. Um, will that budget be coming back before the council or will that be done um, in-house? so to speak. So that will be done in-house. What we're doing right now is we're really trying to lay the groundwork so that when the Board of Visit McMinnville comes into existence, we can essentially hand them a lot of busy work that's been done um, and, and enable them to really have the tools that they need to be able to make decisions. Um, but to answer your question about budgeting, um, Visit McMinnville will be a separate 501c9 organization funded by the 70% um, of transient lodging taxes for the promotion of tourism. So that budget um, would not be coming back to you specifically for, um, for review. However, the council would be reviewing our business plan every year. So you're going to see those elements um, within the, the business plan. Wonderful. But the budget would be some, a document that the board would create, and then that business plan and marketing plan would come to a council. Council would needs to approve that business plan or not approve that business plan for Visit McMinnville to function. Okay, wonderful. Thank you yeah, so I much. I think um, really that's exactly one of the reasons why we wanted to get this up and running and get everything moved over to Visit McMinnville because then they, the city backs out of the recruitment process. It's their, or it's their organization. We provide the guidance, we'll look at the business plan every year, but it's basically much like the successes we've had with, boy, MEDP, MDA, MCM, everything, they'll, they're on standalone, they'll be a standalone organization and stand on their own and what an organization it will be. It's gonna be the best around and so. Kevin, I think as council president, I'll turn it over to you. I have nothing further, I appreciate the hard work and looking forward to the future. Been exciting to see it taken off. Okay. I guess. I guess, yeah. <laughs> I guess uh, Aaron, you have more. Doug, you, Doug, you want to say a few words? Uh, Aaron always mentions your name that you always have something good to say. <laughs> well, you know, I think Aaron's uh, update was was thorough and right on the mark. Um, the only elements that I would add are, from my perspective, I'm very pleased with how quickly the team has progressed the process. Uh, we're moving very quickly, but at the same time, we we're moving methodically, and we're making sure that that we address all the elements that, that we should be in building a, a world-class destination marketing organization. So the, the process and the progress that we've made so far, in addition to the um, really extraordinary assets that we'll have to promote in Visit McMinnville, uh, I'm confident that your tourism future is very bright. The, the second thing, this, my second note was, uh, um, I just wanted to commend uh, the leadership of this community and the leadership of the tourism industry, I, I've just been um, blown away in terms of how collaborative the spirit is in this community and uh, the camaraderie that, that all the different segments of your, your leadership at the city and the city staff and the business community have. It's, it's extraordinary. I haven't seen that in other communities. And uh, my final note is thank you. I'm thoroughly enjoying this process. It's been wonderful to work with all of you. and. Uh, um, I'm looking forward to working with you to create something that's that's worthwhile for all of us. Well, I know we've sure enjoyed having you on board, Doug, and I don't think with your past experience and everything, I don't think we could have done it in the time frame and as well as we've done it without uh, you. And I think what impresses me the most is your ability to uh, not only lead the way, but but transfer that information to everybody else that I've I've learned more in the last six months about DMOs and <laughs> transit lodging than I ever want but I think this is just one of those things that makes McMinnville special and it will serve us well well in the perp in the future so thank you thank, thank you, you. Thanks. So, any other questions if not what I'll do then is I will close unless you have something to say Aaron no uh, I will go ahead and close that portion and that'll move us to resolutions and we do have a resolution number 2015-22 appointing members to the initial board of directors to visit McMinnville and then Martha I know we she's let's name so we really don't have to have much of a staff report unless you would like to say something then we can go into discussions so no it's a fantastic job I appreciate uh, the advisory committee members wanting to stick around to now become the you know, board of directors because <laughs> Boy, you know, you've just touched off the beginning list of things you have to do. So I commend you all. It's going to be a very busy season, so good on you all. Yeah. 
Thank you, Martha. Any discussions around on the resolution itself around the council? Hearing none, then I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution number 2015-22. So moved. So moved by Councilor Drabkin. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilor Yoder. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, um, I'll let it say it's passed the council unanimously. Those members present, and I think this is another, like Paul May always used to say when he was on the council, this is a historic day in the future of yeah. future of McMinnville. And uh, I'm glad, I know I speak for the council myself, and we're all very glad we've been able to be a part of it. And now you guys just have to take, be able to take the ball and run with it. We're sure you'll do a great sure you'll do a great job so well mayor you know we were a little late in getting the the transient tax passed and up and going but i think we're going to make up for lost ground very quickly <laughs> yeah. yes okay you can still sit there if you want to <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to something else mate uh, we might have a question for doug doug here uh, the second resolution regarding that is resolution 2015-23, and that's approving a contract with a financial management organization for visit McMinnville. And Martha, I'll go ahead and let you give the staff report for that one. Well, as we saw today with the budget and Marsh over there, every quality organization's first priority is to get a great finance team. So uh, with that, we put out a contract, a request for proposal for financial firms to join with our new uh, Visit with Vinville DMO. We did get one proposal back. That proposal was Greenstone Financial Reporting. They met the requirements that were outlined in the uh, request for proposal, and it met um, Aaron's um, and Cassie as a finance director over there, our finance help, met their uh, desires as well. So it met legally, it met the performances that were needed based on the director of the DMO. Mm -hmm. So uh, my recommendation would be go ahead and uh, you know, um, approve the contract so that the city can move forward and we'll execute the contract. Okay, I'd like to add one, one thing I'd like to add to that. It, it may sound kind of odd for those in the audience that we only had one RFP response, but the way that the requirements were written the way they were running, it really had to be somebody that knew the destination management organization business, that knew how to account for it, that knew everything. So there wasn't a lot of companies, and based on other companies, both private and um, a DMO organization that used it, I think we're getting a great, great partner yeah. in Greenstone. So may, may I add one more quick yes, thing? Yes, in, in light of um, um, Councillor Drabkin's question. The city is entering into this agreement right. with Greenstone because the DMO isn't formed yet. It won't be formed until we're very much hoping July 1. On July 1, we will assign this contract to VM. So it's, they are going to be handling most of their own expenses throughout this entire thing, but anything that comes up before July 1, we'll be covering and then we'll assign that all rights to them. This is a little extension of the, this, and I'm sorry because it's slightly off topic, and so I hesitated to bring it up, but I, I was curious, um, in terms of, uh, unrelated to the DMO, but in terms of people that aren't actually in um, compliance, that therefore are um, not submitting uh, the revenue that would be funding this, it is, what, what's the follow-up on that? because previously it would have been with the city, would there be any transfer of that? I know we don't aggressively go after people, but there's money being collected, the money is funding this, yes. and there's money that's not being collected because of those that are illegally operating. The funding that will be sent to visit McMinnville will be 70% of what we collect. The collections by law remain with the city. Thank you. We're the so, body. Okay, thank you. And Sorry for the little this, deterrence. This is last but, week, there was a pretty good article, and I can't remember what city it was in the newspaper that they missed out in three years, I think $285,000 in collections because they, a lot of the vacation rentals, vacation homes, bed and breakfast, they had no way of tracking what the compliance was. So that's always, I think, gonna be an issue. How do you track? Because we don't have, in McMill, we don't have anything like business licenses that say this is the business here. And so we have really, if somebody decides to rent out a house as a vacation rental, it meets all the zoning, requirements or even if it doesn't meet the zone requirements, we really have no way of really other than word of mouth of tracking it so hopefully we won't have very much of that here though uh, doug does a dynamite job of tracking yep. those yeah <laughs> 
Okay, um, then what we do is uh, we do have a uh, resolution 2015-23 approving a contract financial management uh, team. We discussed it around the council. We got the city manager's uh, staff report and so I'll entertain a motion that we approve resolution 2015-23. So moved. So moved by Councilor Hood. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilor Mankey. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, let it show that uh, resolution 2015-23 passed the council unanimously of those, me those members present. Okay, so that takes us to another, you guys, you guys can, you don't have to, unless you like to look, let's look at it, so you don't have to sit there anymore, but you can. Well, it is a great view from up here, but if you have no further questions for us, thank you. Well, thank you, thank, thank you, you, Doug. Thanks, Thanks Aaron. Uh, that'll take us into another resolution, 2015-24, and that's revising the transportation system development charges and re repealing resolution number 2014-20. Um, there will not be any public testimony taken during this since it is just a resolution. We've already had the public hearing, so what I'll ask Mike to do is go ahead and give us a staff report. Michael. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. I'll refer you to uh, Resolution 2015-24 uh, that is in your packet, which reflects the Council's direction regarding transportation SDCs at the conclusion of the May 26th uh, Council meeting and public hearing. And unless there are any questions, staff would recommend adoption of the resolution as presented. Okay, you heard staff's recommend, recommendation on approval of resolution number 2015-24. Do we have any discussions around the table? Let's start. Kelly, let's start with you for that. Discussion. No discussion. Larry? No, no, no questions. Okay. Kevin, do you have any? Nope. nope. And let's go to Remy. Remy? Uh, not at the moment. Not at the, not at the moment. <laughs> that means a year from now you may ask. <laughs> not at the that moment. That might, might mean in a moment. But okay, I, no, not at the moment. Well, we were talking a little bit about... Um, as we move forward, we were going to put some type of provision in to look at um, um, for low-cost housing, and I and I thought we were going to ask for some type of staff feedback to us how we could do that. Um, does it need to be a part of the resolution? Uh, is it premature? Just kind of where we sit there. Okay, Martha, I'll turn that over to our city manager, Martha. You bet. Intent is to finish up with, we still have one council session, and that is for the community members who have uh, additional ideas, such as Howie Harkema, uh, maybe Kay Sawyer from Gospel Rescue and others. Uh, we have, that one is still outstanding. Okay. That's going to happen in August. And then we talked before about at some point whether or not you want to do a working session or how you want to proceed then with the fact that you've had so many people come in and educate on what could be done. How do you want to proceed on the next question of what can we do? Yeah. And so right now, I anticipate that we'll probably be in September. September. Okay. I just wanted to get it on the record that that, that is something that we talked about and, and would love to, well, want that to come back and have a good yeah, discussion. Yeah, and I think that was on, the, is on part of the record of the SDC hearings yeah, yeah, that we yeah. want to look at things, everything from... Different things from zone, zoning to SDC credits to everything. I think, yes, yeah, September is when we'll I, probably I, start. Because that is very important. I think it is very important. I, I also right. think, I, I, if I remember correctly, at the end of the May 26th council session, that uh, Council President Jeffries had noted that um, there is currently a... Uh, or we had discussed that there's currently a reduced rate, but that that hasn't been memorialized in any way. And if I understood correctly, he um, asked that staff would come back with a recommendation uh, for that as well, that we would in some way memorialize that uh, discounted rate so that it is... Uh, so and Michael, on, on is books. Habitat the only one that gets the discounted rate right now? Right now? Community builders it would be another one that may. I think we've uniformly applied that to um, organizations that have the same um, business model as Habitat for Humanity. So I, d I don't know of any current building permit that has that um, active discount, but uh, certainly would be extended to other organizations that have that same purpose. So I think, Remy, that's a good idea when we September when we start talking about it to make sure whatever we'd like to do that that gets all memorialized in the code, whatever we have to 
What do we have to do? Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up, Remy. Anything else you'd like to bring up, Remy? He brought it up. And just <laughs> well, but Scott just brings it up for you. We know you can talk for yourself. That's for sure. She's my conscience. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do we have anything more on that one? If not, we have Resolution 2015-424, uh, and that's Revising Transportation System Development Charges and Repealing Resolution 2014-20. And um, we've had Mike's staff report. We've had some discussion. So I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 2015-24. I so move. I move by Councilor Mankey. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Council President Jeffries. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, let it show that resolution 2015-24 passed the council unanimously of those members present. Then... Um, we do have one another resolution 2015-25 this is expanding the focus of the mcminnville downtown association's community committee on public art beyond the historic downtown ad, uh, area and candace i'll ask you to do the staff report on that one the current guidelines for the mcminnville downtown association committee on public art say that the public art should be located in the downtown core area unless the council should request that it be located outside of those boundaries. So the resolution before the council tonight simply says that the council is requesting that the downtown association um, committee for public art start looking around areas outside of the downtown area um, in which we can locate some of the fabulous art pieces that Steve and his gang of seven or whatever it is are, are uh, <laughs> accumulating for us. Thank you, Candace. Yeah, I think it's real important now, our downtown areas, that we start expanding some of our art outside of the downtown area. And I think that, again, just puts it in officially in record what the intent of the council is to allow the MDACPA to look at other areas in McMinnville to place arts that's outside the downtown area. Well, and I think as they develop that walking tour and that can be expanded to go to other parts of the city, I think it just is going to work fabulous well i know th there's several areas that i can think of right on the bay some of the entries into mcminnville uh from the south uh, some of the entries into mcminnville from the north which would be ideal prime locations to put art as an end entry to the city and this will allow if there's appropriate places this will allow that to happen so okay um so what we do is we do have a uh, staff board from candace uh, any more discussion around? Let's start with you, Larry. Nope. I think it's a great idea. Okay, Kelly? I totally concur. Kevin? Nope. Okay, Scott? Nope. No, sir. Remy? No, sir. Okay, so uh, if that's the case, case then uh, what I'll do is I will entertain a motion that we approve resolution number 2015-25. So moved. So moved by Councilor Hill. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilor Drapkin. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, let it show that resolution 2015-25 passed the council unanimously of those members present. That will take us to advice and information items. Um, do any of the councilors have anything on any of the committee or assignments they would like to report on? So let's start, Larry. And I guess you... I, I missed I missed the tour. Uh, I've seen most of it. I missed the tour, but I happened to be on a tour through the canal on that day. So uh, <laughs> yeah, you went on a tour. So <laughs> I guess we can we can. Okay, Kelly, why come and uh, we're meeting? I think next Thursday, and uh, we're not having a budget meeting. So that's all I can say. <laughs> no, but no budget meeting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Kevin, how's things at Cog going? We actually had a budget meeting, and it went well. Good. So they COG's have, still in good shape? And yeah, they're, they're spending down some of the reserves. Uh, they, similar to us, they've established a reserve policy, and so they're, instead of having to raise the rates on their members, they're, they're spending down some of the reserves. Okay. Good. Let's, uh, Remy, nothing for you, although working, working hard and like usual, but we'd expect nothing less of a hardworking council person like you. <laughs> Scott? Uh, I was out of town last week when the uh, McMinnville Urban Renewal Committee met and they're continuing to have discussions around uh, their budget. Doug was there and uh, um, you might fill in, but um, continuing to, to, to look at, um, 
Alpine, the Alpine area. I, th I think we've got the budget squared away now, don't we? And then some. Okay. <laughs> Once you update in anything that the council may need to know, because it's a it's a it's a group that's doing some really good work. It was a relatively short meeting. The uh, committee reviewed a couple of facade improvement grant applications that have been submitted. Uh, one to repaint an historic sign on the a building wall adjacent to the Chaos Building. Uh, the other was to repaint and replace awnings on the Knights of Pythias Building, also on Third Avenue. So uh, that, and as Councillor Hill indicated, continued discussion around our capacity to uh, issue bonds and where and how that money should be directed, whether it's to complement the work on Alpine Avenue or in some other manner was still a uh, conversation that's been occurring over a couple of meetings. Okay. okay. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, the money coming off of the transportation bond for Alpine does about a third of the development that would need to be done from a transportation and infrastructure. And so how, how can we put things to work a little better, better, more effectively? I think we should just charge a big SDC to all the all the wineries and, and places that are located off of Alpine Street. <laughs> oh, I forgot yours was down there. Right? <laughs> okay, um, and just a little bit on the bypass where we stand. Everybody, I think almost everybody has been through the tour of the bypass. Uh, last week I had an opportunity when he was in town for a few minutes to talk to Senator Wyden regarding... Um, the newest Tiger Grant and uh, what I saw as a fallacy and what the committee saw as a fallacy in the Tiger Grants three years ago with the Tiger Four, it came out and the big thing was they wanted um, uh, bike pet, bike pet included. And so we had a rechange and we've been for the third year in the Rosa State's number, ODOT's number one project. So we had to redo all of our Tiger Grant. So we had a lot of information regarding bike pet in there. Last year it was trails, so we had to do a lot of rework to get trails. This year it's on carbon loading and the decrease in carbon loading, so this year we have to do a lot of the, on the Tiger Grant rewriting how the bypass is going to impact carbon loading. So every year they seem to move the target, they right? seem to move the target but they are talking about building America bonds. Um, the big fear is that uh, with, a, with the general election, Coming up, if they don't get more than a temporary patch in place for a new transportation bill, we're probably not going to see a transportation bill at the federal level for probably four more years. And so everything's going to have to be state funded and through Tiger Grants and Tiger Grants just... Uh, there's been one Tiger Grant awarded to one project in the seven western states in four years. And so we're not getting a lot of tiger. I a, tiger speaking grand, of transportation, I, I had the displeasure of driving over the Third Street Bridge earlier today. Are they resurfacing that? Because I noticed there's big chunks of it that are the, the level of it is just all over the place. Martha, you have anything any about more good no, no, on the our bridge? Project. Yeah, I know ODOT does have a. They need to get on it because I was three cars behind a fairly large semi and. Every time the surface would change, he would bounce, which was bouncing the whole bridge around. Yeah. I'll be there. Okay, and let's take a look it was at that. And, frightening. And the good thing is uh, we can work it as yeah, well yeah. because we're looking at the possibility that ODOT will do a larger a step, project, yeah. you know, coming up here at the at the fall time frame when we know a little bit more. So let's take a look and see what we can do. Yeah, it's getting real. There's some really, I'd call them, I guess I'd call them potholes, except a couple of mice are probably almost all the way the through the bed. The you know, they're, they're probably so some light of them are two and three inches deep. It's not that big of a deal, but when a large vehicle comes yeah, down off of that level. Yeah, you know, some of them are probably uneven, two inches deep. The whole bridge is just bouncing. And they're not the asphalt, they're concrete that's breaking out. So, yeah, well, you, want, you want to know something scarier? Walk across the bridge. When oh, that's I, no. <laughs> Oh, I'm riding a bike on it. I feel like you're gonna get. Okay. Do we have anything else? Do we have anything else for the regular meeting, Martha? Do you have anything? No. Okay. How about Rose? Everybody Other than the Willamina, you getting everybody getting back to you on the Willamina local government's All dinner? Good. Okay. Candace, do you have anything? No, I don't. Thank you. Doug. <laughs> Michael. Marsha. Okay. What I will do then is I will adjourn our. Um, 
regular meeting of the McMinnville City Council. So the regular meeting's adjourned. And what I will do right now is open up um, the around. meeting of the July or June 9th, 2015 meeting, the Urban Renewal Agency. Um, I'll call that to order now. And we have two things. We have considered minutes of the May 13th, 2015 Urban Renewal Budget Committee meeting. Has everybody had a chance to look at those minutes? If so, I'll entertain a motion that we approve the minutes. So moved. Moved second. by Council President President Jeffrey, second by Councilor uh, Mankey. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, then that will go ahead and take us to our public hearing, which is regarding the proposed 2015-16 urban renewal budget as approved by the budget, uh, budget committee. I'll go ahead and I'll op open the public hearing. Uh, regarding the budget and how about a staff report Marsha? Uh, this public hearing is required uh, for the urban renewal agency just as it was required for the city's budget uh, so that's a, okay that's <laughs> um, that being said what we'll do then is go ahead do we have any questions for Marsha? if not I'll open it up for public testimony does anybody like to would anybody like to speak to the council regarding the 2015-2016 uh, urban renewal budget which was approved by the budget committee hearing none then we'll move away from public testimony and uh, go around the table and anybody have any questions Larry you have any questions no questions Kelly no questions Kevin nope. Scott no nope. Remy no Okay, hearing none, then what we will go ahead and, and do is, uh, if everybody's satisfied with the discussion we had and has reached a consensus, I'll ask um, Marsha if you're ready to do a uh, resolution for us for the 26th of the, 20, 23rd of the month again for the <coughs> renewal budget. If so, do we have anything else? If not, I'll close the actual public hearing do we have anything else to come in front of the urban renewal agency if not urban renewal agency meeting is adjourned that means we are take, adjourned take a vote. what take a vote did i no you asked if anybody had any questions oh does anybody